Most ships serve a long and illustrious career, however, this is one ship that is known for being lost as soon as it was launched. In around 1904, the Navigonze General Italia, or, or NGI, had plans to build a ship that would be the most luxurious and sophisticated ship Italy had ever built. And although the ship's loss was, is mainly what she's known for, I think we should also get into the stuff that she wasn't so known for. Her interiors were some of the most beautiful interiors that Italy could build on a ship, at the time, of course, and she was going to be the safest ship in Italy's history, at the time, of course. She was planned to go along the South American service, and was the largest ship ever built by Italy at the time. She is constructed at the cost of 6 million lire, which was Italian currency at the time, and she was one of the first transatlantic vessels to be fitted with Marconi wireless and electric lighting throughout. By the way, most of these interiors are actually from her sister ship. It seems she was perfect for doing what most ocean liners did, transport large amounts of people across oceans. Or in Titanic's case, transport large amounts of people to the bottom of the frickin' ocean. Anyways, enough dark, enough dark humor. It's time to get into the darker stuff. On the 22nd of September 1907, the ship was ready to be launched. There was a large mm, audience of government officials, as well as, of course, the King of Italy. In fact, the ship was actually named after his daughter. The bottle was smashed on the side, the ship slid down the slipway, and then she immediately healed to port and began, and began sinking. Me need I remind you that there were actually a large amount of guests and the crew, mm, crew on board, including the captain. The tugboats immediately arrived and tried to get her out, at, but 40 minutes after the launch, she was she was abandoned, and, and, and around 10 minutes later, everyone was off the ship. She soon capsized fully and sank entirely. Immediately after the ship sank, a, a lawsuit was launched against the shipyard. They concluded that without any coal inside the ship to weigh it down, she became un, un, unstable, as the water flooded in, she gradually decided she didn't want to be on this planet anymore. Back then, launching a ship fully complete was a uh, normal practice. However, of course, that didn't last long after the ship was launched. And by that, I mean it actually did last long because there were many people who completely ignored the sinking and launched ships fully complete. Anyways, they also concluded that that it was also prob probably because the fact that the ship was launched complete and and that a proper an analysis hadn't been done as to how she would float. To top it all off, most of the portholes were open. It was just the stars were lining up for the ship to sink, pretty much. Immediately after the ship sank, she was declared a total loss and never salvaged, despite being completely new. However, the ship's engines were were recovered, and pretty recently it's been found that these engines were used on a collier, or collier, that's how I mainly pronounce it, called the MS Matalazu, which had a revolutionary design, and I might make a, another video on it, considering the, ship, the ship's design was so famous there's a whole Wikipedia article on it. Anyways, the sister ship, the Principessa Malfianda, what was being built right beside her as the disaster unfolded. Changes were made to her superstructure, and the furniture was not installed when the ship launched. As well as that, there was some coal inside, and extra ballasts. Eventually, though, the, ships, the, ship, sank around, the ship sank after World War I. I might do a whole video on that, but when is it coming out? That's a very good question.